all that. Great to meet you, man. Where are you located? I'm from Connecticut. So Newington, Connecticut is where I live right now. Grew up in Bristol. Um, okay. Let's move this out of the way. Yeah, I grew up in Bristol uh, most of my life, but live in Newington right now. Right on. Well, I'm in the middle of the country. I'm in Kansas City, Missouri. Okay. So Awesome. Yeah. It's great to meet you. Thanks for taking a minute out. And before we get into your work, I want to know, first and foremost, you know, the whole COVID thing threw everything into a tailspin. And four years yeah. ago, oh, we yeah. were still trying to figure out how we were going to get through it, how long it was going to last. How did you ultimately make it through it? And how did it change the way that you do things now? Wow. So that's actually a really cool question. Well, first, I want to say thank you for having me on the show. I'm extremely honored. Yeah. Um, it was quite interesting because I was actually waiting to leave for boot camp for the service at that point. Um, so I had some medical stuff um, that was kind of holding me up. And then COVID like hit full, like we were in lockdown. Um, so getting all that cleared, getting to be able to go to the physicians and the flight docs and stuff in person was a pain in the butt. Um, I started dating my girlfriend probably about a year before COVID hit. So that was like, we couldn't really hang out, spend any time or anything like that and uh, work. It was just a weird time. Um, so coming out of it, I really do think that like socially it's changed a lot of people. I think the biggest thing is like our social norms in America and probably worldwide as well have changed. And personally, I've noticed that like, I find myself before I would like go and hang out with friends on a Friday. I'm a little more introverted now. And I don't know if that's maybe because I'm older or maybe because, you know, um, we were almost thrust into this weird situation and there was a lot of craziness on the news um, and politics were being played within a serious medical situation that we didn't really know too much about um, at that point. Yeah, it you know, and I think we're probably still too a little bit too close to all of it mm -hmm. to really look back at kind yeah. of the sociology and psychology of how this mm -hmm. has played out. But it definitely altered the way that we humans roll. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think in a way, though, it brought open a lot of doors with uh, like remote work for people, people yeah. building podcasts or building their own brands and businesses online. I think it kind of realized that that is a possibility. And that is something that you could put in even more work from home and still bring out a, you know, fruitful amount of productivity. That is the one thing about it is I'm still I, I, I it's like the Kansas City Chiefs being a dynasty. I can't <laughs> believe that it's true. And it's like podcasting just became this thing overnight. Like mm -hmm. all of a sudden it's in TV shows, it's in movies, people mm -hmm. are alluding to it because I've been doing, you know, interviews for a long, long time now. And then it was like all of a sudden. So there there was a lot of really cool byproducts of, of living through such a weird, tumultuous time. Yeah, 100 percent. And I think it's like you said, it's so close. You know, it's only been what a few years since it's happened. So it's kind of hard to really tell like what what actually happened and what are the effects? I mean. I don't know. I'm 24. I went back to college about a year, year and a half ago now. And, you know, going to school with 18 year old folks, it's kind of maybe again, it's the age gap, but also I've noticed like a lot of them are very socially, there's this like high anxiety, high stress to communicate and talk and just be like normal, normal, quote unquote, to everybody. So I think that might be something that in the future will probably address or changes how we go socially, which is kind of interesting. And, I, you know, obviously the healthcare industry was yeah. adversely affected. There was a lot mm -hmm. that rippled through there. But I think mm -hmm. with schools and, and education to keep kids home for two or three years. Oh, yeah. I mean, that that right there. And a lot of these, you know, 18 year olds you're talking about, they were in the middle of that awkward teenage spot mm -hmm. in their lives <laughs> that they couldn't exercise. Because even though you don't want to do it at that age, you got to exercise the demons. You got to yeah. you got to get some tread on those yeah. tires. And when yeah. you didn't, you get just thrown into this brand new world. Yeah. And it keeps getting weirder day by day as we see with our political environments. So, yeah, it, it's weird. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. We're definitely uh, I, I I honestly think not even just COVID, I think in the past few years, we're in a very interesting time, like socially and culturally and politically um, in our in our country's culture, you know, overall. So yeah. I think it's really, I'm really interested to see what happens in the future and how we actually go about, because we always rebound and we always kind of rebuild, I guess, if you will. Absolutely. That's been kind of the American way. So yeah. let me ask you this. If I was to put you in front of a bunch of third grade students right now in 2024 mm -hmm. and it's career day and one of the kids says hey what do you do for a living what would your answer be oh i'd 
That's a good question. Um, I'd probably say most likely uh, the military. So I'm a C-130 loadmaster in the Connecticut Air National Guard. Uh, I got to deploy to the Horn of Africa. Um, so you, we operated in countries like Somalia, Kenya, um, and we got to support some pretty high level organizations within the military and outside the military to support their war fighting efforts over there. So I'd probably speak on something like that. Um, Cause I know when I was in third grade, I really uh, appreciated when people spoke about being in the military and stuff, hence why I ended up joining. Um, but I would really say that you could do anything. That's the biggest thing. Um, you're, ability to do anything at any time as soon as as soon as you become old enough you could become a firefighter and be a podcaster you could go be a lawyer and work on the side wherever you want to you know i yeah. think i think we often think in that one minded 9 to 5 that's that's my trade that's what i do when you could have three or four things that you do and as long as you're surviving and you're getting by or you're thriving and you're living the life that you want to live so was it always a dream for you to get in the military? Like say when you were in the third grade? Oh, a hundred percent. So when I was in third grade, um, I may not have had the whole idea fleshed out, but my step uncle, so he was in Iraq and Afghanistan. He did two tours, Iraq and Afghanistan. He was uh, army civil affairs. Uh, he was in the heat of it. Um, and he always inspired me. He would send me like pictures, postcards as he went through training. When he was on deployment, he got to do some cool stuff and would mail back pictures from home. So I knew from that young of age that that always interested me. Um, I always had an interest in academics as well, weirdly, but I really wanted to join the service and, and do some like GI Joe type stuff, you know, um, and it, throughout high school and stuff like that. Like we mentioned that awkward stage, I just was like, what am I going to do with my life? You know, I come from a family that's not very financially uh, affluent to go to college. Um, and I didn't really have an idea of what I wanted to do in college at that point. So I was like, you know what, the service might be a good idea. And even deeper than that, um, at that point, I was training and, and uh, doing boxing for about two, three years. And, you know, I was very, very uh, gung ho. I was like, I'm going to be a professional boxer, da, da, da. And uh, I had a realization moment one summer, I was on a run and I was like, you know what, I probably should join the military to some extent, um, you know, and, and get the opportunity to go to college and play it a little smart that way, since I wasn't, you know, on the track to be a professional boxer, per se, <laughs> that wasn't in my cards, I guess. Um, so in all of these pursuits, who's been a hero for you and inspiration? Oh, so... My grandfather, he was in the Air Force back pre-Korea. Um, he's always been a hero, the strong masculine model, as well as my step uncle, who, again, he joined the service at, you know, 1920, uh, you know, Iraq, heat of Iraq and Afghanistan. I always thought he was, you know, a hero to me. Um, and that those those are the two biggest uh, models in my life that I, I try to guide myself. Like, am I doing right by those people, especially my grandfather? Um, he, he really taught me. The idea of being able to have because he always had different hobbies and he was a, a carpenter by trade but he was a handyman so he'd fix cars do this do that fixing repair building things he you know he'd do lawn care um and and just he was a good man he really helped out his neighbors good man a representation of what a good man should be so of everyone that's alive on the planet right now if you could meet one person and spend some time with them who would it be Ooh. who would you love to meet and talk to Oh, that's a good question. There's, there's probably a lengthy list, I think. And I guess he's super popular now. But um, when I started listening to him, David Goggins, I'd really love to pick his brain uh, from a personal level and just have a personal conversation uh, and see exactly what, how, how does, how does that the mechanics of, of the insanity of running ultra marathons and breaking, you know, pull up records and being a Navy SEAL with, you know, jacked up legs and his whole story uh, and really have like a personal, not podcast, not, uh, you know, media based, but just a conversation like over dinner. I think he's an interesting psychologically individual. So what is your motivation every day to do the work that you do to, to go after your goals and to consistently do the best you can and evolve as a human? What is that for you every day? I think the biggest thing as a human being and overall with building this podcast, this business, being in the service, going to school full time is that it just got, it has to be done. Like it has to get done regardless of how I feel. If one day I wake up and I'm like, oh, you know, I really hate today. 
it doesn't matter if I hate today. It's there's progress needs to be made. Some sort of, uh, you know, measurable progress must be done. Um, and it becomes, it becomes almost, uh, there's momentum to it, right? Like a snowball on a hill. Cause even the days that you don't want to do it, you go and do it. And then the next day you might be a little more motivated. And so for me, that's the biggest thing when I'm juggling, you know, a lot of different, a lot of different, uh, pursuits in my life right now. So what, what's, what, let's say we talk in, in like 10 years from now, what mm -hmm. do you want to see happen? What's your, what's kind of your outlook? So my personally, the biggest outlook is I'd like to see my my gym wear brand cosmic absolute be the greatest gym wear as well as the first gym wear brand with a graphic novel. Uh, we're working towards that right now, but I'd really love to build a brand that holds uh gym wear and, and gym enthusiasts and the nerdy side. Cause I think, you know, nerdy people do end up going to the gym as well as building this podcast, um, which is tied with the brand as well, really overarchingly help people and entertain people. That's the biggest thing on a large, large scale. And this would be a full-time endeavor. So what's the best advice you've ever gotten? Ooh. Um, we had a family friend, she was dying of cancer. She was terminally ill at this point. And this is when I decided that uh, I should probably not go and try to pursue being a, or that I wasn't going to be able to be a professional boxer at this point, you know, kind of reality set in for some aspects. Um, she was dying of cancer and she heard me, uh, our other family friend and my father having a conversation about what I'm going to do after high school. And again, I'm like, I'm going to be a boxer. I'm going to be, you know, a fighter. Da, da, da. I don't need college. Don't need the service. You know, um, I, ca I can do it. I can do it. And she turned to me and she says, you do what you think is right. You do what you think is right. And that's the last thing she ever told to me. She kind of grabbed me by my shoulders and told me that look me in the eyes and it's lived on with me. Every time I make a decision or, or decide to pursue something or I want to, you know, fulfill something, right? And achieve something, I think of that. Am I doing what I think is right? Or am I pursuing someone else's dream, someone else's goal for me, what they think is right by the formula? Um, and that that has been the biggest thing that I replay on the days where I'm questioning, is this, is this worth it? Yeah. So of all of these things that you've accomplished up to this point, what are you the proudest of? I think my deployment to the Horn of Africa, that was just, uh, it almost felt like a, uh, a coming of age kind of story. Cause throughout high school, when I decided that I was like, I'm going to join, um, and join the service, I uh, had a lot of hiccups. Um, so I was born with bilateral club feet, um, never really limited me in what I could do. Some of my mobility is a little limited. Um, and, just kind of, I guess my joints are a little weird. I have super flat feet, but that limited me from getting into the service initially. Uh, I was actually trying to join the Marine Corps at first. Um, and, you know, through about three years, three BUMED medical waivers, a congressional inquiry. Um, and yeah, I mean, I even tried after that to try to keep pushing and just got flat. No. So I ended up trying to pursue a different branch. Um, so that in itself, being able to join, but being a military aviator um, is something that is truly, I'm truly proud of. And then getting to deploy and exercise that training that I did that, you know, took over a year of training from boot camp all the way through uh, what we call uh, you have, so you have your pipeline, you get back and you do in doc. Um, so it's an in doc folder and you just get trained up on how we do things at our home base out here in Connecticut. Um, and, and doing all that and then spinning up to deploy to Africa where, I, you know, you have guys like Jocko Willink, you have movies like um, Black Hawk Down, you know, they were made, that's a place that like people don't often get to go and see and experience and getting to go and serve my country and uh, really pursue, I guess, what I'm passionate about and help people downrange over there was really something I'm still proud of today. So if you had a dream tonight, ran into that version of you right before you entered the military, and you could give that young version of you a piece of advice based on everything you've seen so far, all the wisdom you've gained, what advice would you give that young version of you? I, I would say just keep fighting for what you want. Keep going. You're going to, it's going to suck. Like you're going to have days where you question, is it worth it? Am I going to make it? But just keep going. Like through the darkness, you will find the light. And sometimes... Sometimes you need to be that light, right? You need to be that little speckle of hope to be able to get through whatever darkness you're going through, whatever struggle you're going through, whatever challenge you're facing. Sometimes you need to be your own ladder, you know, against that brick wall to get over it. 
Um, and that's, I would just say, keep going. So Joshua, at the end of the day, everyone has a perception of you, family, yes. friends, colleagues, everyone around you, but you run the show. What's your perception of you? Who do you think you are? Oh, that's, that's a deep one. Yeah. You know, I, I'm not too sure. I, I like to think that I'm a hard, to try to be hardworking and humble. Those are the two biggest character traits that I try to embody um, overall. But I really do think that personally, I, I don't, tr I try not to put too much thought, thought into my uh, perspective of my own self. Um, one, because I believe that can feed the ego, but I also think it could be super detrimental. Um, oftentimes, especially myself, I'll speak on myself that um, it's easy to have the negative, you know, the negative person nipping at the back of your head. Oh, you're not good enough. This isn't good enough. Oh, why are you even, you know, the negativity. And I think oftentimes if you focus on what you think you are and put the vision inwards outside of introspection and trying to be better, um, it just becomes a cycle of negativity and then unproductive and pretty painful, I think, for most people. Yeah. So if anyone out there wants to listen to your podcast, reach out, learn more about you, any of the good business, where's the best place to go? All right. So you could find us on YouTube as well as all the traditional audio platforms like uh, Apple, Spotify, um, Google Stitcher. Um, we have every Monday at midnight, uh, we post our episode. Uh, it's a weekly episode. We have guests from all over the world, essentially. I've had Army Rangers as well as former Dev Group operators. Uh, published authors um, so yeah, you could really find us at apple podcasts as well as spotify the two main ones and then youtube for the video format and we also have all other social medias that we try to manage as well right on man josh but well, this is great i love the energy thank you for your thank story you, best of luck on the journey you're on your way man thank you thank you thank you thank you for having me on the show this was an awesome show i really i really i really enjoyed it these questions made me really think <laughs> excellent